Today, I've got some huge stories for you. Starting with Intel doing the unthinkable, we have more RX 8000 news, a major issue is being fixed with Ryzen 9000, and AMD just dropped the most insane gaming CPU ever. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I've already discussed a little bit of the fact that Intel's been having some major issues. Specifically, they're hemorrhaging money, so much so that they've literally laid off thousands of employees, they're moving things back, they're, let's just say they are making some massive shifts. And unfortunately, one of those changes is going to have a huge impact on the market as a whole. As you can see right here, it says, as Intel's struggles continue, rumors are now emerging that plans are afoot to flog its chip manufacturing fabs. Moving on down here, the story originally comes from Bloomberg, but you can see it says, Intel's struggles have been going on for so long that this was kind of inevitable. What are we talking about? Well, there's reports that Intel is currently weighing up the pros and cons of spinning off its fabs. In other words, Intel is considering whether it should sell the factories that make all of its CPUs. And what's wild about this is that this is fairly shortly after they literally got a deal with the Chips Act to get 85 billion, yes, B billion dollars specifically for their fabrication, for bringing fabrication to the US, things like that, but now it's looking like they may ultimately sell it. And to be honest, I know quite a bit of people don't like Intel, they don't like some of the kind of egregious tactics that they use for marketing and things like that, and I fully understand that, but keep in mind that this is not a good thing. Besides the political aspects of where TSMC is, the simple fact is at this point, there really is almost just one major manufacturing company being TSMC. They make Apple's chips, they make Intel's, or even some of Intel's right now. They make AMD's, they make Nvidia's. I mean, at this point, they really are becoming a monopoly. And if you know anything about business, you know that monopolies are terrible. And I mean terrible for everyone, consumers, as well as say AMD, Nvidia, and all of the other chip makers, simply because if there's only one company that actually manufactures them, they don't have any competition. That means they get to name their price. They simply don't have to make anything better because if no one's competing with them, who cares? Why spend the money on R&D when you can just make as much money as you want right now on your current product? Basically, while this may seem like, ah, we can laugh laugh at Intel or something like that, this really is not good and it's not good for anyone. Hopefully this does end up just being a rumor or at the very least, I mean, that really just says that they're weighing the pros and cons, but hopefully they end up not doing it. And next up for today, we have yet more news on AMD's upcoming RX 8000 GPUs. But first, when I was around 15, my parents bought me a new mattress. It was awesome because I never had a new one, but after about a month, I started having really bad back pain. Long story short, we finally figured out it was the mattress. And ever since, I've been scared to buy a new one. The one I've been using was probably almost 20 years old at this point. But all of that changed when I found out I could get a bed made just for me. And after using it myself, I'm happy to say they're the sponsor of today's video. Helix, the premium mattress that's customized to fit exactly what you need and shipped right to your door. All you have to do is take their Helix sleep quiz to be matched up with the perfect mattress for you. I got the Helix Midnight because I'm a side sleeper and it's absolutely amazing. Plus, they have a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty, so you'll never go through what I did. And today, they're offering my viewers an exclusive discount of 27% off your purchase and two free pillows. Just click my link in the description and use code HELIXPARTNER27 to start your better sleep today. Now, back to the story. As you can see right here, this one originally comes from the Weibo forums via Golden Pig, who has definitely been a very accurate leaker in the past. And basically, well, here's what it says. It says the positioning of RDNA 4, which is of course the architecture in AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs, or at least what they're built on, is similar to that of RDNA 1. So don't expect flagship level performance. The focus is on reducing costs. If Navi 44 can improve the performance of mid-range GPUs, that would be a good thing. Otherwise, it could become common for Nvidia to sell the 8107 as the 4060 in the future. So once again, this is really just reiterating that fact that monopolies 
are not good. You definitely want competition. It forces companies to simply do better in pretty much every way, price, performance, everything. Though, of course, people are rightfully a little bit worried in the higher end because Obviously, it sounds like NVIDIA won't be having any kind of competition up there. So obviously there, NVIDIA could increase prices even more, which they've already gotten them to absolutely ridiculous levels. But of course, it does sound like they are at least doing it for the mid range. And if they do actually end up reducing costs in any significant way, this really could be a win for most consumers simply because the vast majority are the ones purchasing GPUs like the 4060. And ultimately, we already pretty much knew that they weren't going to be releasing a higher end model. So I would argue that this is really just good news. If they do ultimately release something like an RX 480, it could be fantastic for the market as a whole. And next up, it looks like AMD is working on something that could make their Ryzen 9000 series CPUs significantly faster. For those who didn't see it, during the Anantech review of the Ryzen 9 9950X and 9900X, oh, really quickly, I do have some honestly sad news. It was something I was pretty shocked to see. As you can see, it looks like Anantech is in fact going away. And I don't know, this is really just an aside note, but I will say that growing up, I would read Anantech fairly often, and I will say that a lot of those writers are gone. I know Anantech actually was sold a little while back from the original owner, but it's still honestly sad to see it go. Either way, back to the story, basically in their review, they actually showed this, and it shows core to core latencies. And when we move down here, you can see looking at the above latency matrix of the Ryzen 9 9950X, we observe that the lowest latencies naturally occur between adjacent cores of the same CCX. Though, with that said, you can see that the average, even when they're on the same CCX, actually it even says it's the SMT advantage where two logical cores sharing a single physical core have a lower latency. That's somewhat gone here as well. You can see latencies are consistency around 20 nanoseconds from any logical core to any other logical core. Within a single CCX, the average is slightly up from 18 nanoseconds. So that is actually within the same CCX. So that's not great, but not a huge difference, except when we move down here, the latency from one core to another within a different CCD. So remember how Ryzen ultimately works. They have multiple chiplets that are combined into one. Well, technically they on the Ryzen series consumer products, they have up to two chiplets and each one of those chiplets have eight cores. So when they're actually communicating across chiplets, the latency has gone up drastically. As you can see right here, it says on the Ryzen 9 7950X going from one CCD to another CCD is around 76 nanoseconds. But in the 9950X, they're seeing an average latency of over double that at 180 nanoseconds, meaning that something that was already very taxing on latency that really slowed things down, which was the cross CCX communication using the Infinity Fabric, it's literally gotten twice as bad. And what's really odd about this is the simple fact that Zen 5 effectively uses the same, you can see it right here, it says it reuses the same IOD and Infinity Fabric configuration as Ryzen 7000. So those latencies really don't make sense. Well, it looks like AMD is in fact planning to fix it. As you can see right here, this is from Leaker HXL. There's someone who was apparently discussing this in a Billy Billy video, and according to him, AMD will fix the Zen 5 C to C latency issue. So Ryzen 9000 could be getting even more performance before too long. Now I will say you're not going to see it in things like gaming just because they already cut off one of the chiplets when you're gaming. So you really shouldn't see any kind of cross chiplet communication there. But in pretty much any professional workload, this could have a fairly decent impact on performance. And lastly for today, the leaks were right. AMD just announced the brand new Ryzen 7600 X3D. And it's one very interesting chip. I'd actually say it's set to be the best price to performance gaming chip out there. Let me explain. 
For starters, as the name suggests, the Ryzen 5 7600X3D is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, and that may sound bad, but don't forget that we already know performance numbers thanks to the 7900X3D. In fact, Hardware Unboxed recently did a video where they compared the X3D chips and they simulated a 7600X3D by disabling the non-3D vCache chiplet. And basically, in some games, you can see right here, when you took out the 3D vCache, there is, so this is the 7800X3D, there is actually a slight performance reduction, likely because the other cores can't work on background tasks or something like that, but in others, you can see that it actually does better. But overall, there is an average here, and the 7600X3D does do slightly worse than the 7900X3D, but it still should beat the 14,900K. The huge point here is the fact that this bad boy comes in at $299. That's right, it can likely beat the 14,900K at nearly half the price. And when we compare it to the 7800X3D, it is 8.5% slower, but it's 19% cheaper, making the 7600X3D the best price to performance CPU out there. The only question will really be clocks. The base clock of the 7600X, you can see it's slightly lower to 4.1 gigahertz with the boost clock being 4.7 gigahertz. And that one we're really not sure about just because AMD only lists the boost clock up to, but that includes the typically much higher boosted non X3D module. Don't forget that when you have that 3D V cache, you ultimately have to lower clocks by quite a bit. Basically, all of the really confusing stuff aside, we definitely do still want to wait on reviews, but so far it's looking like this could be a champ of a CPU. With all of that said, there is one big downside. It's only being sold at Micro Center. So at least for now, you'll have to stop by Micro Center to pick one up. If you don't have one near you, maybe you'll be able to get Get one online from Micro Center, but for those who do, you'll definitely want to check this one out. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's new gaming CPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the Ultimate Mattress with Helix down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!